Don Bailey on edge finders. Well, there's a whole choice of them here, and we're going to go through the entire gamut of them, and we're going to show you why we think one is better over the other, but more importantly, I want to show you how they function and how they work and why. We're going to show you a little bit on the board, and then we're going to take you in the back, and we're going to demonstrate how it, uh, how it is affected one way or another by runout. So this is the one that's very common and very popular, and it's called uh, a wiggler. And it has a number of different points that you can use. As you can see, there's like four different ones. The, uh, the function of this one is that it basically goes inside like so. Now it wants to be stubborn, right? There we go. And when it's spinning, it'll find its own center. So that's how that guy works. This one works similarly. This one happens to be double-ended. It's either 200 thousandths at one end or half inch on the other, whichever you depend on, whichever you figure you, you might want to use. This could be in a tight spot. Uh, this might be more in the open. But it basically functions the same way. As you can see, it, it offsets itself, and it'll find the center of the spindle itself. And we'll talk about that, too, because that's kind of critical. This one's 200 thousandths only. This guy is electronic. And what it does is it passes the current from the spindle of the machine all the way through to the part. Just to give you an idea, if I short this out, you'll notice that the light will go on. So I'm going to short that out as if it were in a machine. As you can see, the light goes on. So that's how this guy works. This one right here, I kind of like, but it has its problems too. The way it works is we know that this face is directly on the center line between these two faces. So if you put it up against something, an edge like that, then you put your dial indicator inside your uh, spindle or on, uh, connected to your chuck, and you sweep it back and forth until you get it split on both sides. Now, you would think that that would be the most accurate, but it's got its issues too. Let's go to the board, and I'm going to show you what I mean. Keep in mind that the spindle of the machine is what everything is going to be running true to in most cases. Not, not with all edge finders, but with most of them. If this is the center line of the machine, and this is the spindle of the machine, and we have a chuck that's going to be attached to this. It's not a very pretty chuck, but it's a chuck. Now, when when we put our edge finder in here, and this is the part that moves, right here on this one, this is the part that moves, if you can see that. It doesn't matter whether the chuck runs true or not, because what matters is the center line of the spindle. This edge finder right here is going to find its own center. Think about it in this terms. If this were spinning, and if I were to put a grinding wheel in there, and if I were to dress the grinding wheel, it doesn't matter if the chuck runs out, it doesn't matter if a collet runs out, it doesn't matter if any of that runs out, because it's going to find its true axis to the motor that's spinning. Does that make sense? You follow that, Glenn? Yep, I'm trying. All right. So. Keep in mind that everything works off the axis of the center line of the spindle. Now, if I put this type of an edge finder on there, and I put it on my part, and I sweep it with an indicator, and I put an indicator in here, and we call that sweeping, not sleeping, but sweeping. So even, let's say we put it in a, we put it in a collet, and we have a collet in here, like so, and we've got our edge finder here, like so. Now, again, with this one, it's going to find its own center to the center line of the spindle as it turns. If I put a wiggler in here like this, it's going to do the same thing. It'll find its own center. But if I have a collet here, and I put this type of an edge finder in there, and let's assume for a moment that that collet runs out uh, ten thousandths. 
So now this one, and let's look at that. If this is, the center line is now off, and it's going to rotate in an orbit, assuming that the collet is not accurate, then with this electronic one, you're not really getting the true edge. Because if this runs out ten thousandths, you're going to be off ten thousandths. And you're not going to know it. The same thing is true if I put an indicator in there, as I mentioned. And if I put an indicator in here with a point in it, and, and, I, and I go around here and I sweep this, I move the indicator to one side, move it to the other side, and I pick up the center line. But again, if the collet is, or the chuck, or whatever I'm using, it could be a Jacob's chuck, it could be a collet, if that's off 10 thousandths, I'm going to be off 10 thousandths. That's why this type of an edge finder, in my view, is not anywhere near, and this one, the electronic one, is not anywhere near as accurate as one that is that has a, a floating center, if you will. To me, this is the best. And I'll tell you what, we're going, to, we're going to go out in the shop and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. Because I'm going to take a, and put a piece of tape on one side of that of uh, the wiggler that I like, put it in the machine and we'll watch it rotate and you'll watch it as it actually finds its own center line. Let's go out in the back and take a look. So we have this cool centering scope that we didn't talk about in the conference room, but it's a good idea to show you what its characteristics are all about. What's cool about this piece is that not only can you use it as an edge finder, but you can also use it to find a line somewhere else or another hole or whatever. You can't do that with an edge finder. It's a little awkward to use, as I mentioned, but to give you an idea what I mean by awkward, I put the spindle here in neutral, and so I can spin this around. Why do we spin it around? Because there could be error in the collet. If the collet is out of tolerance a little bit, this is a way to take it out. There's an adjustment here that moves this lens back and forth. So what you do is you line it up this way, and then you move it 180 degrees, and you line it up that way. If the crosshairs are off a little bit, you adjust it here. That takes the air out of the collet. And I've already done that. So what we're going to show you is how this scope will repeat. So we've got a camera on the readout, and we have a camera shooting at me, obviously. And we're going to show you exactly what the repeatability of it is. I think it's pretty good. I checked it out before we went on camera. I was pretty impressed with it. I didn't think we could get that close. I think the magnification of this lens is 40 times. So with that in mind, you can get a pretty good view uh, of your edge, and repeatability becomes a lot easier. So let me show you what that's. Let's take a look at that, Glenn, and let's see if we can make this thing repeat. So I've zeroed in the display, and I'm going to go back and forth a little bit and try to find that edge two or three times. So I'm looking in the scope, and I'm seeing the edge right about there. What do we got? Well, we're minus five tenths. That's pretty good. We're within five tenths. Let's do it again. Here we go again. And again, I'm not looking at the readout, I'm looking in the scope. Let's see what we got there. Right on the money, it's within a tenth. Well, one more time. All right, checking that out through the scope, and I would say it should be right there. On the money again. That's pretty amazing. I didn't think that the scope would be that accurate. So that's one way to check an edge. All right, so, Glenn, the first thing I did here was there's some controversy about an edge finder, and it's necessary to have a true collet to make sure that the edge finder works properly. And I've said, and I think I showed that in the conference room, that that's not so. You don't have to have a collet that's true. So what I did was I took and put a piece of uh, cardboard in here and set it on the jaw so as you can see that that's running out big time. You can see how this piece is running way out at the top. Now, it's no different than if I were to put a diamond dresser and put a grinding wheel in here, put a diamond dresser, and when I dress it, 
It's going to be true to the spindle. It doesn't care if the arbor is off one way or another. It doesn't make any difference. So this is an exercise to show you, to prove to you, that the collet does not have to be true. You're going to make it true when you touch the edge, just as if you were grind or dressing a grinding wheel. So let's see if we can repeat it each time. I can hear it. And I'd say that's about right. Well, it's within a thousandths and a half. Let's do it again. I can, can you see it touching? And I say right about there. That's within five tenths. Do it again. That's within two thousandths. So my guess is you can probably get it within a couple of thousandths, but I wouldn't trust it to get it any, any closer than that. So that's one example. Let's do one more. We'll do the, uh, the electronic one next. There you have it. You can see where the jaw was biting on it. Again, we just did that to prove to you that it does not have to, it does not have to be inserted in a collet that's running true. All right, so the electric one, which has a battery in it and a light, has its issues too. Let me show you what I mean by that. The simplest way to use it is to crank it in until it touches and watch the light go on. See? There it's on, there it's off, which tells me that the collet's not true and this is running out a little bit. How much is it running out? Maybe not very much, maybe a couple of thousandths, but if you're trying to get more, accurate, more accuracy than that, that's going to be a problem. So that's the issue with, that I see with the electric one. But the electric one's pretty cool. You know, you'll get it within a thousandth or so. Let's see if I can get it to repeat. So let me zero this in. All right, I zeroed it in. Let's see if we can get it to repeat. Well, that's right on. That's like dead zero. Try it again. Right on again. So again, this is a good tool, but there is an issue with, with run out. As you can see there, the light's off. Here are the light's on. Why? Because the collet is not running true as it could. Other than that, it's a good tool. That's another way. One more way to find the edge. This one's kind of cool. Got a magnet on it. Pop it up against there. Make sure your edge is clean. And we'll come in here with the indicator. And we'll find the middle here. What you want to do with the indicator is make sure that we get a zero on both sides. And that's all there is to this guy. It's kind of cool. I like it. it. Takes a little bit of adjusting to get it right, but you get the idea. And we're almost there. So we want to get zero on both sides. Here we have zero. This side we're about plus 10, so we're going to split that. Put this on, say, 10. We'll re-zero it. Let's see how that looks. I like the idea of working off the spindle because you're taking the air 
uh, out of the collets. That part's pretty cool. So I personally like this tool. Right there, we're within a thousands or so. And we're a half a thousands here. And we're a half a thousands here. So this is a great way to find the edge. And you can get this within, a, in my view, a couple of tenths. So which one is best? I'm not sure, but this one's pretty cool. On to the next one. That's the famous wiggler. Woo! All right, here we go. All right, we'll zero that guy in. Come back and do it again. That's within a thousandths and a half. One more time. Let's see where we go. I'm saying, whoops. Now there what happens, that's what happens when you go by it. So you know you went past it. Got a pretty good eye for this stuff. If you don't, I'd say right there. That's within a thousandths. One more time. Right there. Within two thousandths. So there you go. So which way do you think is best? Looks like the, the scope is probably the best, but it's a little awkward to use, and it's more time consuming. It depends on how close you need to be. It's gonna find its own center to the center line of the spindle. I think we've shown that. So there's a different uh, opportunities you have for different edge finders, and uh, make your own choice. Thanks for watching.